Hi, I'm Andrew, an entrepreneur and a computer science student. Hi, I'm Raveen, a psychology major student. And you're now listening to the Ink Thoughts Podcast, where we ponder and talk about incongruous thoughts ranging from our daily life to the human mind. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ink Talks Podcast. So yeah, today, I mean, this morning I actually went to the university to join a photo shoot. Yeah, it was quite um, um, a special experience for me. Yeah, I've never really done something like this. Yeah, and um, we're actually um, shooting some photos and some videos for the use of the university. Yeah, they, they probably put into like online perspectives or something like this. Yeah. So it was quite fun, yeah. And yeah, that's basically about it. Yeah, so this that's how I spent my whole morning doing. Yeah. So um, after coming back I'm I'm just resting a bit. Yeah. You know, although you you're not actively doing a lot but still you it kind of drained your energy afterwards and especially under the sun right now. Yeah. So, um, that's basically um, about my updates, I'll say, yeah. Other than that, yeah, I'm just quite looking forward to tomorrow because, and if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow because Andrew and I are going to Lake District. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, hopefully, it will, be, it will turn out um, being very fun. Yeah. Other than that, let's head into today's topic. Yeah, so, um, last month, I did uh, an episode on... Um, um, talking about my mom yeah in conjunction with mother's day and so now i'll be i'll be fair i'll do one for fathers yeah yeah so yeah um, so father's day father's day is coming up and so um this episode will release one day before father's day yeah so um, let's talk about my dad then yeah so my dad is someone that actually looks very serious if he doesn't smile yeah i remember when i was younger my friend came to my house and and they told me like they're quite um, afraid of my dad which is kind of funny to me when i hear that but still um, yeah you can imagine how how he looked like and um, because that time he don't he doesn't really i remember he didn't really um, have much interaction with my friend he just sit there and do his stuff i guess that's why um, they find him to be a bit fierce yeah um, and so, um, other than that, I know since young, um, he, I, I knew he has certain expectation on me, although I, I wouldn't say it's like super high or what, and he don't really restrict me in doing um, stuff, but still, I guess another factor is that I'm, I'm those like good girls since young, so I pretty much don't really have anything that will make him angry at me or stuff like this, yeah, so, but of course, I, I know that he has expectation on my academic results as well so um, but because i i do have um, expectation on myself and so i don't really most of the time i i did get um, at least um above average result yeah which is kind of satisfaction factory for me but i remember um, because of that he was angry at me just for twice or I'll say when I was five years old like yeah I don't I don't really know what happened like my result just suddenly dropped yeah other than that it, it was when I was 16 yeah at that time yeah I, I yeah I basically couldn't really adapt well into um, those like different um, exams matters at yeah those format and stuff like this and so in the end I didn't really get a good result yeah it it actually mm, makes me feel very embarrassed and sad that time as well. But still, anyways, mm, those are past. Yeah, let the bygones be bygones. Yeah. So mm, anyway, um, I'll say um, he's still someone that I very much look up to. Yeah, he comes from a family that is very poor in the past. Yeah, mm, I remember after he, he I mean, um, this all of the stories are what he and my mom shared with me um and also my grandma yeah when i was younger so yeah um uh, i remember mm, mm, what i was told is that mm, my m- grandma told him to start working and don't continue studying after he finished high school but <laughs> i don't know if he's being rebellious or some or what yeah so he didn't want to so he told my grandma well mm, yeah i i know you can't afford for my tuition fee and so I'll work and save the money myself. So yeah, then he went to Singapore and work 
in the factory, if I'm not wrong, for two years to save himself enough money to go to university. Yeah, so after two years of working in Singapore, um, then he came back and applied for university. He used to dream of becoming a lawyer, but that didn't happen um, because, yeah, last time he, he, he was applying to those, um, gov- I mean, public university and so you don't really have much choices you just put in your choices and basically what they give you is what you got in the end so um, at the end he didn't get into those law law school and he actually did um, mass communication and minor in psychology yeah so um, then he started going to university um, and he was the only one that went to university among his siblings yeah, and at that time it was quite quite funny. Like when when he told me, like um, yeah, he also other than him himself wanted to go into university, um, because there's this cousin of his that went to university before him, so the whole um, what's that called? Okay, kampong was so excited about that and kept on telling all those good stuff about him and stuff, and so he he wanted to prove that he can do it as well. It's not the cousin, I mean, it's, his cousin is not the only one that can do it. And so in the end, yeah, he did it. <laughs> but still, um, um, so he went to university. And the thing that I got from this story is like, um, I admire his determination in trying to achieve whatever he wants, although it requires a lot of hard work and determination. Yeah, And apart from this, I find it quite interesting I mean, another thing, yeah, is that he's actually quite a banana man because um, since young, he went to English school for primary and secondary school. And so he actually can't read and write Mandarin at all. Yeah. But of course he can speak. Yeah. Um, so I remember when I was quite young, he, I don't know what inspired him to do so, but he actually went to take up calligraphy class yeah, those Chinese calligraphy, calligraphy, yeah, and he started to discover his interest in Chinese tea too. And so he and one of his friends actually go to um, different, a lot of different Chinese tea exhibition and also um, um, those tea shops and try out those tea and turn out he knows quite a lot about Chinese tea now. Yeah, and yeah, that there's quite a quite a lot of Chinese tea at my home and also those Chinese teapot yeah he actually knows which is like those um, factory made or which is those handmade which which is which is much more valuable yeah because those handmade is just one single I mean mm, after I mean those um, people that made it can only make one at a time so yeah and so the whole thing to me, it's quite amazing because imagine he's someone that can't even read Mandarin though. And so even those words on those what, what, uh, those Chinese tea um, packet or what, he don't really understand or yeah, because he, he basically can't read it unless someone tell him. So I find this whole thing quite interesting. Yeah. Anyway, and another thing that I'm really, really proud of him is that he's actually a professional golfer now. So, um, oh yeah, by the way, um, this is a side note, yeah. Um, anyone who's interested in learning golf in Malaysia, feel free to drop me a message and I'll send you his contact. Yeah, my dad is a golf coach now. So yeah, anyone interested in learning, yeah, just drop me a message, yeah. So, okay, back to the story. So, back in my memory, um, he's been playing golf for maybe 20 years now. Yeah, when I was... In primary school, I always heard him um, joining different um, competition and getting champion and won some prize like TV those back home, which is kind of excited for a kid to see. Yeah, you know, when you come back home and see, oh yeah, there's a new TV TV at home and um, and probably we might ask like, oh, who bought it or something. But turns out it's actually things that my dad won, won back, which makes it even more meaningful. Yeah. So, um, and after, uh, every time I when I got to know that oh yeah this thing or that thing um is actually a prize that my dad won it actually makes me feel so 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 proud back then yeah so um, he's someone that 
Mm, he has to play golf every single day or else he feels uncomfortable. So imagine how hard it is for him to stay at home not playing golf at all during COVID time. That was funny. Yeah, he actually tried to buy something that can um, kind of assimilate um, um, at least practicing golf or something. But yeah, it didn't, didn't turn out well. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so um, he tried to participate in many different competition and um, a few years back, um, he actually passed the professional qualification exam. So um, from what I know from him, that uh, there's actually two types of this kind this qualification exams in Malaysia. The first one, um, you have to maintain a certain ranking or else um, you will lose that qualification. If you maintain it, then you can renew it every, every year. I think he has been renewing that one for about eight, nine years now. Yeah. Then another one that he actually just gotten it um, two, two years back. Yeah. That one is like, um, you are qualified for four hours. Yeah. So, um, um, so for the first qualification exam, um, I remember that time he, he was ranked the first and that exam and news reporter actually um, interviewed him and um, the whole thing um, was published on newspaper sports section and the star if i'm not wrong yeah yeah i think it's the star yeah so after the news came up i was so 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 proud of him imagine you're seeing your dad on newspaper and it's like half a page though yeah it just makes me feel so proud of him yeah and i'm really really happy that he got to achieve his goals yeah, I know sometimes like because um, joining all this competition and also this qualification exams, actually, you need to spend quite a lot in those like um, registration fee, and sometimes if if it's far away from home, um, they need to rent um, uh, an Airbnb or or uh, book a hotel or something like this, which requires you to spend money. Yeah, and sometimes you need someone to help you carry your golf set during the competition itself and yeah that makes me spend money as well so sometimes my mom was like oh, you're going to spend money again and stuff but still my dad yeah he has got those very determined kind of spirit that he will keep on going although you know yeah my mom is not saying all the good thing all the time yeah some i i'll say my mom's encourage him but not all the time sometimes um she might still feel frustrated yeah <laughs> anyway um so um um after that um so a, a few years back i think i if i'm not wrong it's t just two years back yeah so he actually went to another um professional exam which will qualify which will qualify him for this professional uh, professional status for forever yeah so I mean, for, for your lifetime, yeah. So that one um, will qualify him to become a coach after, I can't remember, one year or two years um, of supervision under people. Yeah. So now he's um, a coach now. So anyone interested, just, yeah, just let me know. And if you ask me, the one thing that I'm really, really admire and would love to learn from him is, if there's a problem, don't give up and just try different ways to get them solved and be determined to achieve whatever you want. He has shown me that, I mean, across all these different um, examples that I've raised up just now, yeah, he showed me that with enough determination, passion and hard work, you're able to achieve what you want. Yeah. It's not just, you know, people sitting there and saying, nah, just work hard and you you get there. It's actually from real life example that he really did that. And for me, I'm really so proud of him. He's my dad and yeah. And I guess that's all from for this episode today. Uh, I just really wanted to say like, yeah, um, thank you so much for being my dad and taking care of me for all these years. And um, I'm really proud of you and I hope I'll make you proud one day too. Yeah, um, I guess that's it for this episode today and thank you everyone for listening. If you have um, any um, comments or anything that you'd like to share with me, feel free to um, comment down below or drop me a message. 
drop us a message on our social media. Yeah. Um, or else I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. If you enjoyed, do share with your friends and family and leave us a review on the Apple Podcast. If you are not using an Apple device, you can leave a review on the Apple Podcast website with the link in the show notes. If you have any feedback or thoughts which you hope that we'll discuss in the future, feel free to email them to us at hello at ingthoughts.com or alternatively, you can send us a private message on our Facebook, Instagram or Twitter with the username of ingthoughtsport. Thanks again and see you all next week. Bye-bye.